And as we continue with the service, I wish first to invite Judy Wanjiko Kebake to read the eulogy. The life and times of Her Excellency, Mrs. Lucy Mudoni Kibaki. The late notable poet, Maya Angelou, once famously avowed that my mission in life is not merely to survive, but to thrive, and to do so with some passion, some compassion, some humor, and some style. In this respect, Maya could well have spoken for, about, and of the dear departed former First Lady, Her Excellency Lucy Mudoni Kibaki. Lucy Mudoni Kibaki, born Lucy Mudoni Kagai, has bowed out of this earthly abode with distinction in what she did, believed in, and stood for. She has, no doubt, journeyed through a life favored by uncommon privilege and blessings. Yet, at no time did she abandon her strong convictions devotion to courses she set her mind on or her instinctive motherly compassion. She, unlike many important people, thrived without letting her inborn yet hardly flaunted empathy get blunted by the all too common lure of fame and fortune. In the course of her life, she has provoked men and women in their numbers to reflect upon the place of personal choices, attitudes, and worldviews in the pursuit of recognition or destiny. In retrospect, the former First Lady has also nudged us to think about how style, station, and substance, especially among those in the public eye, constantly affect how we live, view ourselves, and perceive others. Most certainly, Mama Lucy has made her mark, and indeed, appended a perennial and indelible signature to the story of the makings of modern day Kenya. The weight and relevance of her contribution have secured her firm anchorage in, her, in our collective memory now and for generations to come. Clearly, we mourn the demise of an extraordinary woman, a woman of conviction and substance in equal measure. Mama Lucy was a loyal daughter, a dedicated wife, a devoted mother, cherished grandmother, true friend, and a patriotic Kenyan. To borrow from Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, the late Lucy Kibaki, though an urbane and well-exposed, still owed her outlook to a traceable local habitation and name. First things first. Her Excellency, the late Mama Lucy Mudoni Kibaki, was born on October 26th, 1934 at Tumutumu Mission Hospital, Nyeri County. Lucy was one of ten children born to the late Reverend John Kagai, a pioneer Presbyterian Church of East Africa minister and the late Rose Nyashomba Kagai. Tumutumu, as was Gekondi of the recently beatified Sister Nyada fame in Mukroene, was one of the bastions of far-reaching Christian influence in a largely traditional society. The late Lucy Kibaki was enrolled at Mihuti Primary School at a point in time when very few children, let alone girls, attended school. The novelty of joining formal schooling back then was a preserve of the exposed, the so-called Abomi, among them church ministers, clerks, and teachers. After Mihuti, Mama Lucy and her sister Victoria Wamboi joined Tumutumu Missionary School. From there, the late Mama Lucy Kibaki proceeded to Alliance Girls High School in Kiambu County, then as now the envy of every aspiring secondary school student in Kenya. After her high school education, Her Excellency trained as a teacher at Kambui Teachers College in Kiambu County. Upon qualifying, Mrs. Kibaki taught at Kangaru Girls School before joining her alma mater, Kambui Teachers College, this time as a tutor. 
Today, her protégés, back then in their adolescence and young adulthood, glowingly applaud late Lucy Kibaki as a towering role model and mentor. In the true once a teacher, always a teacher spirit, Lucy Kibaki's predisposition for nurturing the youth did not wane even after she quit teaching. Indeed, this was apparent during her tenure and involvement as the, as the, with the Kenya Girl Guides Association, Sterehe Girl School, and the education of several needy children. The late Lucy Modoni met His Excellency Honorable Mwai Kibaki in 1960. He was then a lecturer at Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda. The two were married on December 16, 1961. His Excellency Honorable Mwai Kibaki and Mama Lucy became parents and were blessed with four children and seven grandchildren. At this time, Honorable Kibaki had already given up his job at Makerere to become the Kenya African National Union Executive Officer. This was a very momentous period in Kenya's history. It is the period during which the founding fathers of modern day Kenya were busy building the pillars of an eminent independent state. After her marriage, Lucy initiated various retail business ventures besides undertaking farming in Nyeri and Nakuru. She gave up working to be a full-time mother and devoted most of those early days bringing up her family of four children. She was the bedrock of the family as her husband got immersed in the struggle to set Kenya free from colonial domination and thereafter to stand on its feet. Family was Lucy Kibaki's foremost priority. True True to her own strong Christian parentage, she taught her children strong Christian values. Looking back, an imperceptive newlywed, and more so a young career woman, would most likely have felt shortchanged if caught in such intense dynamics, demanding loads of personal time and space of a husband. However, Lucy Kibaki, certainly buoyed by foresight and fortitude, looked far beyond prevailing circumstances and chose to serve as a pillar of support and encouragement to a man whose time and intellect were critical resources in, cru in a crucial transition in Kenya's history. Several other transitions were to happen throughout the public life of her husband, spanning 60 odd years, including ascending and descending from the vice presidency. All through, Lucy was more than a silent witness she was a constant reminder of the genesis of His Excellency Mwai Kibaki's career in public service and the detours thereafter. For most of His Excellency Mwai Kibaki's occupancy at State House, Lucy unwaveringly set standards and occasionally defended her values on matters of order and decorum. An outspoken and keen voice against social injustice, the late Lucy Kibaki expressed her mind with unmistakable clarity and a sense of purpose. Her sense of standards was uncontested. Never once did she entertain hypocrisy. She was true to herself. The late Lucy Kibaki's love for children and young people in general is an open secret. To the few she would confide in, most of her charity work was done away from the glare of the media. In her demise, hardly a fortnight on, the record of her charitable work and deeds of compassion are coming to the fore. Unbeknown to many, Mama Lucy's offhand generos generosity came to the rescue of many whose woes were brought to her notice. She educated a number of her nieces and nephews and was always there for the extended family whenever help was needed. Mama Lucy's abiding love will be missed by her husband, His Excellency, Honorable Mwai Kibaki, her children, that's myself, Judith Wanjiko, Jimmy Kibaki, David Kagai, and Anthony Kedenji. Her daughters-in-law will also miss her, Mrs. Cheryl Vienna Kibaki, Mrs. Grace Wamboy Kagai, and Mrs. Edda Gumo Kedenji. They will forever cherish her, as will the, her loving grandchildren, Joy Marie, Ryan Mwai, Christina Modoni, Giorgio Mwai, Jeremy Mwai, Annalise Modoni, and Leah Rose Modoni. Death has snatched a dedicated matriarch, 
a fighter for the less privileged and a candid defender of human dignity. May Her Excellency Mama Lucy Kibaki rest in eternal peace. She has read well. You can give her a big clap. <clears throat> Your Excellency, Honorable Uhuru Kenyatta and Mrs. Kenyatta, Your Excellency, former President Kibaki and your family, Your Excellency, William Ruto, Deputy President and Mrs. Ruto, your Eminence, Cardinal Jue and the clergy, members of the cabinet here present, governors here present, senators here present, members of uh, the National Assembly, members of the Diplomatic Corps, even leaders of the opposition here present, fellow mourners. Today I have the privilege of uh, being your master of ceremonies, which this afternoon will be short and brief. But before I invite who is going to be the focus of our day today, let me just take this moment to say on behalf of the Nyeri County and its leadership, including the governor who is away, I wish to convey our condolences to His Excellency President Moi Kibaki and his family, and indeed to the entire uh, Kibaki and Kagai families uh, because of the loss of our dear mom. At this juncture then, to keep, I said it's going to be short and brief, I wish to invite the grandchildren of Mama Lucy Kibaki to come and give a tribute. Grandchildren, why? A lot has been said about Mama Lucy Kibaki, our charismatic former First Lady. She often spoke her mind and defended the rights of Kenyans because she cared deeply about them. She pledged for family values and protected the core principle rights that ensured every individual should live a quality life. Her character structured her very own identity and her passion for music and fashion was exemplary. As our Shosho, she taught us valuable life lessons by sharing stories of her children growing up and her most favorite stories were about her youngest son, Tony. With the most compassionate care possible, there was plenty of intrigue in our lives and education. And she was keen that we understood the essence of unity in a family. Every time we met with her was always memorable and, would take, uh, and we would take home something worth recalling for enlightenment countless moments afterwards. Remembered as a loving wife, mother, grandmother, sister, aunt, and friend. In the hearts of many more, she was a voice that delivered hope and a promising role, and a promising role model who served her people and left behind a legacy that co uh, continues to serve. Today, as a family, we are sure not to miss her alone. And as her spirit moves on, 
there is unity in our nation in remembrance of our angel and with her legacy remains her memory which will live on as she rests in peace till we meet again. Thank you. Shoshu taught us that nothing is more important than family. She was a mother to all of us. Perhaps we are not ready to say goodbye to such a loving soul. There are some things I wish I had said. Maybe you had some things to say too. But when I talk to myself, I feel as though we are connected, and I tell you all that I have failed to say. Shusha had one of the strongest characters of anyone I've had the privilege to meet and call a grandmother. She demonstrated her passion for what she believed in in her work and her personal life. As we say our farewells, let us remember that her soul does not die. She lives on within us in our memories, in our hearts, and as well in the core values she instilled within us. So whether we meet again in this life or the next, I will remember that no soul is gone, especially when bonded with love. So let us not say goodbye, but instead, see you again soon. show you taught us to value family you never gave up on us you gave us the knowledge to be true to one another Shosho was the most kind-hearted person I know she always made me put on a smile even at the hardest times to me she was a grandmother to others she was a mother a friend and a mentor she never wants to stop believing in me her spirit is with us and you will never forget her what she taught us will never be forgotten she lives on through all of us Hello, um, I'm son of David Kagai, and I would like to mark this tribute to remember Shosho as what a loving and wonderful person she was. Hello all, I would like to mark this as a tribute where people remember Shosho as an incredible and strong woman. As we mourn the loss of one of our loved ones, I would like to say that these moments bring us closer together and we learn to cherish the moments that we have on this beautiful world, world that the Lord God has provided for us. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Milani. Um, as God welcomes a new angel into his heavenly home, we here on earth can't help but feel the loss of her life deeply. Although we're not ready to say goodbye to you, Shosho, your love and strength still lives within us. The love of Oshosho is truly unique. I'm completely grateful to love and to have been loved by you. Shosho played a huge role in my childhood, constantly bringing liveliness as well as comfort and joy. Not only that, but she continuously reminded me of my worth. There was honestly never a time that she didn't remember to mention how us girls are truly powerful and how us Madani is a serious force. Shosho truly was a special, special woman that God blessed us with. Shosho, I already miss you so much, but I know you will always be with us. It is truly comforting to think that with every stride, you are still here beside us. I know that you are happy and at peace now, and because of that, I will continue to live with the same energy and love that you did. Now more than ever, with everything I do, I strive to do it with the same passion you taught me to, and I do hope that I can make you proud. You still and forever will, Hold a sincere place in my heart. Love you, Madoni Christina. Hello, I'm Ryan Moy. Otherwise, he's known as Big Moy. <coughs> we all know Mom, Grandma, Shosho, Lucy in different ways and have our own special memories. Her role in our lives will forever remain exemplary. She had a vibrant personality and a soul that would ignite a fire within anyone. Mediocrity was simply not an option. 
when we think of you sharing the days that we once knew, chatting together in that same old way, from the Christmases spent at the pool in Mombasa, the trips to Odaya, or just simply having a cup of tea at the house, it seems like only yesterday. I look up to the sky and I talk to you, what I wouldn't give to hear you talk back. There are several things we can all learn from her. Family is and always will be the most important component towards having a happy and successful life. She taught us that love will always triumph and that nothing comes easy, but if you put your mind to it, there's nothing you can't do. She taught us to be humble and that it is not the love but the contempt of glory that creates a great man. To my family, may we stay strong and united through God's grace and continue to make her proud. As Shosho loved poems, be fitting as my last words to her. Those we love don't go away. They walk beside us every day, unseen, unheard, but always near, still loved, still missed, and very dear. God pours life into death and death into life without a drop being spilled. You may not be living here for all to see, but in our hearts, you will live forever. You'll always be with us. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Joy Marie, the daughter of Judy. Um, dear Shosho, you may be gone, but my memory of the times I spent with you will stay with me forever. I, I'll always remember spending my spending some of my childhood days at the old Mateka house eating biscuits, to the time you drove me to Parliament to pick up Guka, to the State House Mombasa days, and I'll remember and I'll remember how you were one of the first people that came to see me in hospital after my accident, and how how you came to visit me every day after that. I'll also remember your last months in Mathega and how you smel smiled every time I came to visit you. All the memories will always stay with me throughout my life. But what is more important is the lessons I learned and the values you instilled in me during the time we spent together. These are the lessons and values that have shaped me into the woman I am today, and they're the lessons and the values that I will pass on to my children, and they will pass on to their children. Thank you, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have grown up to be the woman I am today. I feel blessed to have grown up looking up to both you and my mom, two strong and independent women. It's because of both of you that I've always known that my gender will never be a limitation for the things that I want to accomplish in my life. You taught me so much throughout the years, but one of the most valuable lessons that will stay with me is the emphasis you put on education. I'll never forget how much you valued education and hard work, and I'll continue to live live the rest of my life making an effort to learn new things and to learn about the world around me. Because of you, I'll always work hard at everything I do and use my success to make a difference in the lives of ordinary people just as you did. Early on the morning of the 26th of April, God looked down on you and he was pleased at all you had achieved for him here on earth and he decided that it was time to call you back to himself. You were never ours. You had been granted to us. You have always belonged to God. The, mo the morning of the 26th, God sent his angels to the hospital and they covered you in their wings and flew you peacefully back to him. You are home and I know that there's an angel watching over me now. Rest in peace, Shosho. I will always love you forever. Joy. Thank you very much indeed. Please let's give them a lo another lot of applause. I will now invite the second tribute, which is going to be done on behalf of uh, Mrs. Lucy Kibaki's sisters. On behalf of the sisters, please.
I'm reading this uh, on behalf of my sisters, uh, Jane, Rika, uh, Margaret Kagai, and uh, Catherine Joroge. And on behalf of myself, I'm Mary Mungai. Back in the day, to our sisters, you are simply Mudoni. But later on, we got to call you Mama Chiku. It's only later when you became first lady, we would refer to you as Ninawadu, people's mom, when we did not want others to know who we are talking about. We have always looked up to you and our late uh, elder sister and boy for guidance. Whatever you did, we would follow because you are firm and had character. You never followed the mood, but did what you believed in. As one of your gradually put it, you did it your way. You lived true to yourself. You, you, your main priority was always your family. As being married to a politician, most of the time, your mom and dad, since Muse, was too busy trying, among other things, to see free Kenya on its feet. You have four harbor down to us children, a testimony to the great job you did as a mother. They were blessed to have such a devoted parent. We know you exceeded your caring heart to some of your nephews and nieces and made sure they had solid education. We have also read in the media of the wonderful work you did for the less privileged of this nation. We are not aware of some of these charitable deeds because you did not seek publicity. You did them because you genuinely cared. Our dear sister Mudoni, God saw you getting tired, so he put his arms around you and whispered, Child, come to me. With tearful eyes, we watched you slip away as you, as, and you fought hard. Although he loved you dearly, we could not make you stay. Your golden heart stopped beating. Your hard-working heart rested. God broke our hearts to prove to us that he only takes the best. I have uh, this quote from, by Henry Ward Beecher from the book Streams in the Desert. When the sun finally drops below the horizon in the early evening, evidence of its work remains for some time. The skies continue to glow for a full hour after its departure. In the same way, when a good or a great person's life comes to its final sunset, the skies are illuminated and until after she is out of view. Such a person does not die from this world, for when she departs, she leaves much of herself behind, and being dead, she speaks. We will miss you as a sister, a mother, and a friend. Our best memories of our young lives were spent in your home. Bless in God's loving arms, Mudoni, till we meet again. Thank you very much. Please also, let's give them a lot of applause. Um, Your Excellency, today I am going to get into problems, particularly with um, we, the politicians, because of two things. Number one, it is the wish of the family that today we spend the day reflecting and thinking about her Excellency Mama Lucy Kibaki and her work, and indeed to think for once, not so much about the politicians who are active out in front like myself, but the wives of politicians, who are politicians by default, and who sit behind us and make things happen. So today, give a thought <laughs> to wives of politicians. And I say this knowing fully well that today I'm going to get an extra plate of food from Anne. 
Your Excellency, therefore, since today is not a day of speeches and it is not a day of um, um, many other tributes, indeed, if you look at your, um, the, the, the program that you are carrying with you, you will notice that there is one tribute from the children that we have left out, and that is to be read in Othaya. It is therefore my privilege and duty to invite His Excellency, the Deputy President, William Ruto, to make a few remarks and then invite the President of the Republic of Kenya.